So, okay, so this is question four. It says, um, choose all statements below correctly describing and or explaining the idea of universal laws. And um, I, so you are always welcome to give it a try without looking at the hint, but you know, somehow if you don't get it 100% right in the first try and, or if any of these aren't clear, I do recommend the hint. A lot of times hint just refers to a section, <laughs> but uh, when I do that, I am, uh, I'm not being snarky. Uh, there's a acronym called the uh, RTFM in tech world that um, I'm not doing that. I'm, I am pointing to, to the part of the section that should be useful, helpful. So I'm trying to be helpful to take a look at that. Um, let me try to answer that uh, now, assuming I've read section 1.3. So. And it's uh, questions like this, it's basically true or false question, um, true or false question for each one of the statements. So I'll just uh, approach it that way. It says universal law means that the same laws apply, apply everywhere in the universe in the same way they apply in experiments done on Earth. Yeah, that sounds pretty universal. And um, this is uh, really one of the things that we rely on without this, uh, assumption at least, we can figure out from experiments that we do on Earth that what we figure out on Earth is gonna be applicable elsewhere. It, so, um, so universal law, the, the, we, uh, when we say universal law, we are assuming that the laws that we discover on Earth are universal. And so far we haven't found any contradictory evidence as far as we know. And as soon as we see that, we will adjust our assumptions. Okay, second statement, universal laws mean they're connected. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I hope as you are reading through um, that you realize this is a nonsense statement. <laughs> um, but you know, it's grammatically correct and maybe it, it may even sound plausible if you are in a mindset to consider this seriously. <laughs> Okay, because scientific laws are universal, once they being, they, one, they are not codified. It's not like a, a loss, a human loss. So, um, yeah, and I'm, so this is a wrong statement. So now I think this is where I'm trying to be tricky because when we talk about, uh, for, for example, law of conservation of energy, yeah, there are no known exceptions to law of conservation of energy, but um, because someone calls something law, like Ohm's law, it doesn't mean there are. This is where nuance matters. And I would ask you to <laughs> look at the slides. Uh, that's where I try to point out some of the nuances. And uh, what I will say is that um, we do advance our, so the, the, the frontier of knowledge uh, between settled science and the uh, active area of research, it's an ever expanding frontier. And um, sometimes we thought things worked one way and then we, as we study further, we figure out there are things work differently. And when we figure that out through observation or experiment, then we change our laws and theories. So um, yeah, so how it worked it wrong. <laughs> and where it's wrong is this. It's like once it's been written, uh, writing down laws in science, scientific laws, that doesn't, that has a zero impact on anything. <laughs> other than, other than illustrating our understanding of nature. Okay, uh, without universality of laws of nature, we cannot know much about a process occurring in other parts of the universe. Such yeah, yeah, this is what I was saying, why this is important, that this universality of laws of nature are necessary. So that's our starting place. That's at least what we assume until we find evidence to the contrary. And we have not seen that evidence yet. We, we believe the same laws that apply on celestial bodies, such as planets also apply to objects on earth and vice versa. Yeah. And this is in contrast to something you have seen in module one. In module one, we talked about um, laws of planetary motion. Those were three Kepler's laws that somehow applied only to planets. And, um, and we now understand that through the lens of the law of universal gravitation. So, um, and yeah, so uh, and later we'll talk about how um, the versions of Kepler's law also applied to moons of Jupiter. And because um, 
forget universal loss. And I guess among these choices, I don't quite um, phrase it uh, this specific way, but um, when you look at the lecture slide, so this is the slide that talks about law, laws of nature. And um, I was thinking, okay, how should I describe the you know, laws of nature? And I wrote it this way. A law or a principle may be described as a concise description of nature. And uh, this is the part of the phrasing that I've seen it misunderstood by people from time to time. That is broadly applicable and generally true. And the part that I've seen people misunderstand is the phrase generally true. I think a lot of people, when you uh, use that phrase, like you use English phrases in every day, um, generally true has come to mean, it's, it's come to mean a similar thing like uh, literally. Uh, a lot of times when people say uh, literally, they mean figuratively. <laughs> and when people say like something is generally true, they immediately follow up with how in this specific case, it's not true. <laughs> And when I say general true, I almost mean it in a mathematical sense. And this is that's this parenthesis here, as in always true with no exceptions. So when we say a law is a statement that is generally true, what we mean is there should be no exceptions. <laughs> so something that is generally true in this sense is also specifically true in every single case you can find. And uh, the value of it being generally true is that you don't have to find every single applicable cases. That's uh, kind of the value of the universal law. So I wanted to point this out because, you know, as you are reading this, if this confused you, then yeah, I've seen that, but um, I, I'm not gonna change it this because that's uh, sort of how we scientists talk. And I think um, some of the values in uh, science classes is figuring out the weird ways we talk. So I'm just gonna leave that be. Um, okay, so that's the question. It, um, um, it hopefully not all that difficult, but I spent the time because um, it's kind of philosophical thing. And if you let me go on, on philosophical things, this session will never end.